Legalize marijuana because its side effects are no more, no less dangerous than that of alcohol and tobacco. First, in the affirmative plan, the government will permit the growth and possession of marijuana, which was criminalized by the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. Currently, the federal government and state governments are regulating tobacco and alcohol. The Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, or DTB, <coughs> regulates the sale of these products. So why can't marijuana be included? Our plan will place a $1 sales tax instituted by the federal government for each gram of marijuana sold. This second step of our plan is already put in place by the federal government, which makes it both practical and desirable. The total revenue of the TTB, which taxes alcohol and tobacco, as well as firearms and ammunition, is nearly $21 billion a year. According to Harvard economist Dr. Jeffrey Miron, if marijuana was added under the taxation system of the TTB, 10 to $14 billion a year could be made by the federal government. As stated in the LA Times, marijuana is the biggest cash crop in the United States. Over $35 billion a year are spent on this substance, which tops common plants such as corn and wheat. If these marijuana transactions worth $35 billion were regulated through the government and then sold by private companies instead of dangerous underground dealers, the United States' $13 trillion debt would decrease dramatically. Furthermore, in an article on businessweek.com, Stephen Easton of the Fraser Institute looked at this issue of marijuana from a different perspective. Instead of looking forward, why don't we look at the past, he thought. Easton is referring to Prohibition 1920, the complete ban of alcohol in the United States. The following first-hand account of Prohibition depicts the ineffectiveness of the law and the many negative effects it had on America. There is not less crime, but more. There is not less insanity, but more. The cost of government is not smaller, but vastly greater. Respect for the law has not increased, but diminished. Journalist H. L. Mencken, 1925. The amendment was repealed 13 years later because of its obvious inefficiency. Prohibition in 1920 and the prohibition of marijuana now in 2010 have direct power parallels. Both increase crime rates, both cost the government money, both are ineffective. My next point deals with the significant amount of marijuana users. A study done by the National Survey on Drug Use and Health in 2005 concluded that 40.1% of Americans over the age of 12 have tried marijuana at least once. That is an estimated 97.5 million Americans, as Dylan previously stated. Imagine the tax revenue the federal government could receive if the sale of marijuana were just taxed $1 per gram. This is money our country needs to pull us out of debt and rebuild our economy. This plan is very practical because the system is already put in place for other substances. Marijuana would follow the age requirement for purchase at 18 years old and would be available for purchase wherever cigarettes are currently sold. Meantime, without marijuana being the focus of policemen, our plan will allow the police more time to better enforce the laws on dangerous and illegal substances such as heroin and cocaine. According to Dr. Miron, the Harvard economist previously mentioned, the government would save $7.7 .7 billion dollars with the conclusion of prohibition enforcement of marijuana. This money will, one, lower debt, and two, give more money to the security forces to crack down on users of more hazardous drugs. This solution is advantageous, not only for economic purposes, but also for the sick and pain-struck citizens of America. As mentioned earlier, the benefits outweigh the risks for smoking marijuana. Studies have shown that marijuana is no worse than the legal substances of alcohol and tobacco. In fact, nicotine found in cigarettes is far more addictive than cannabis. More deaths are caused each year by tobacco and alcohol than are caused by marijuana. According to drugwarfacts.org, 435,000 deaths are caused by tobacco annually, 85,000 are caused by alcohol, and zero for marijuana. My opponent brought up the risks of using marijuana, but he did not mention the many benefits. For example, cannabis has been proven to treat glaucoma, which is an eye condition which leads to damaging of the optic nerve and blindness. Pressure behind the eye causes glaucoma. According to Time Magazine, marijuana reduces this pressure on the eyeball by 25%. Another important medical use of marijuana is to treat patients of chemotherapy to relieve them of nausea and headaches. Cancer is a very important subject in most of our lives. We spend a lot of money on cancer research and treatment options, but will not legalize marijuana to help relieve their pain. My opponent brought up that marijuana can cause schizophrenia. Yet, studies have shown that marijuana can benefit users who have ADD and even schizophrenia. It is a myth dressed in scientific costume that marijuana can cause schizophrenia, says Dr. Lester Grinspoon, Associate Professor of Psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. As shown, marijuana has great benefits. The affirmative does recognize the risks of smoking marijuana, 
Yet don't all legal drugs have risks? Every commercial you see for medicine on TV has side effects scrolling on the bottom. For example, Benadryl, a common allergy medicine, has side effects that are similar to marijuana. Both can cause impaired judgment. Uh, should that be illegal? Robitussin, a cough medicine, can cause an increased heart rate, just like marijuana. Should that be illegal? The risks of smoking marijuana are the same in many other over-the-counter drugs available in every pharmacy and supermarket. So why is marijuana illegal? My opponent pointed out that marijuana is a stepping stone or gateway drug that leads to more harmful drugs such as heroin. As I previously mentioned, 40.1% of Americans over the age of 12 have smoked marijuana. As stated on the website heroinabuse.us, 1.5% of the people over the age of 12 have tried heroin at least once. Compared to the amount of smokers of marijuana, that is a very minuscule amount. As marijuana users has risen over the years, the hero amount of heroin users has decreased. These numbers clearly demonstrate that marijuana is not a gateway drug to dangerous drugs. To conclude, marijuana should be legalized and regulated by the federal government because it is no more dangerous than the legal substances of alcohol and tobacco.